In this lecture, we're going to start talking about gravity. Okay. So to begin with gravity, uh, we can always talk about the force of attraction to the, the center of the Earth and stuff. But uh, I'm going to begin by talking about the motion of the planet. So, um, in the 17th century, a uh, person named Johannes Kepler came up with Kepler's three laws. So let's state the Kepler's three laws first. Okay. So the first one is that orbits of the planets are ellipses with the sun at one focus. Okay, let me draw ellipse first. That's an ellipse, like a squash circle. And in these ellipses, there's a short side and long side. There are two foci, right? And one of these foci is the sun. Right? Now let me just uh, list a few things here. So there is a long side here, and then a short side. And this long side length is called the semi-major axis. semi-major axis actually have that, so in fact it's uh, the major axis. And this is the minor axis. And then if you want semi, this is semi-major axis. Alright, it's half the major axis, the semi, that's what semi means, half. Okay. Uh, and there are two points. There's a point of closest approach. This is called perihelion. And uh, the close, close point of uh, further approach was aphelion. Right? Okay. This is closest. This is furthest from the sun. In this case. Alright? So that's the first thing. So it basically said the shape of the orbits are these ellipses. The second thing he said is that orbits sweep out equal areas in equal time. Okay, so for instance, basically if I want to look at something like this, then the area is from the sun's focus here. This is the area there, A1. This is another area here, right, A2. And so if the time to go from here to here is equal to the time to go from here, then basically A1 is equal to A2. And what that means is that basically as you get closer to the sun, you're moving faster. And you get further away, you're moving slower. So that means, really it really means that uh, closer sun, move faster, further away, move slower. And then the third thing that he found was that basically the period T, the time it takes to go around this ellipse once, is related to the semi-major axis. Hey, all right, so that means the semi-major is this distance right there. 
So in fact, basically the answer was that t squared equals a cubed, or proportional to a cubed. It's actually the more correct way of saying that. All right. So for instance, for Earth, a equals 1 AU, because the definition is 1 astronomical unit, is the average distance the Earth is away from the Sun. Okay. T is one year, right? So basically what we have is that T over one year squared is equal to A over one AU cubed, okay? So if you want to big figure out stuff, this is what you have to do. And uh, let me just write down numbers, 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters is uh, basically 1 AU. Alrighty, so now, because of this, you can use this law right here, sorry, uh, this law right here to estimate the periods of various planets. Right. So we can... Right. So as an example, right, Jupiter. A is 5.2 AU, right? And so let's find the period of Jupiter. Right. So T over one year squared is equal to 5.2 AU over 1 AU, cute, right? Let's go ahead and figure that out. Uh, get my little calculator out. There we go. Okay, let's just uh, clear everything out. Okay, so uh, 5.2, whoops, 2 um, to the third power, that's 140, a square root of that. So I'll take the square root of that. 0.5, right? So this gives me t is equal to 17.4 years. Did I do that right? That's yeah, 7.3 cubed. We find that's right. All right. Okay. So. So now, the interesting thing about the Kepler's law is that these laws are empirical. Which means, actually, so I'll write it down. Empirical. So basically, Kepler knew this from observation. And it wasn't easy, right? Um, basically, you had to look at a lot of data uh, back then. They did was collected very painstakingly, right? Okay, but we can also get this. From Newton's gravity. Newton's law of gravity. Okay. Let's try and figure out why this is so, all right? Okay, so let's write down Newton's law of gravity, okay? Um, So suppose you have basically two masses. This is m1, m2. There's some distance away from each from from some point. Okay, this is r1 vector, r2 vector, and there's a distance between these two, which is r12. Okay, 
R12 is equal to R2 minus R1. All right. So now Newton's law of the gravity is the following. F of G from 1 to 2 is equal to minus G M1 M2 over R12 squared R12 hat. Okay? Whereas this G here is Newton's constant. Did I state what it is? Six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven Newton square meter square over kilogram square. Oh, Newton, sorry, Newton's meter square over kilogram square. Right. Okay. These are the masses of m one, m two. This is just a unit vector, and so this right here, this entire term right here, is the magnitude. All right, so that's very nice, okay? So, you can actually figure out Kepler's law from this, Kepler's third law. All right, that's as follows, basically. Suppose you have a really massive body M, some further away, a little m. It's moving at some velocity v here, right? Okay. The period t, right, is equal to the time it takes to go around in a circle, right? So it's the distance of a circle divided by the velocity, right? Okay, so what that means is that V is equal to 2 pi R over T. Okay. Now, if it basically moves in a circle, then the force of gravity better equal to net force, which is the mass times AC. All right? So this is just going to be, I'm like just doing magnitude here, this is going to be m v squared over r, right? Better equal to the force of gravity between these two. That's g m little m, right? So g m little m divided by the distance between these two, r squared, okay? And then r has just some unit factor there, right? Okay, so these m's kill each other. One factor r kills each other, right, as well. Okay, um, and so we plug in the velocity here, we get something that looks like this, 2 pi square r square over t square is equal to gm over r, right? And so you mix and match this thing. We get t squared equals, bring this, bring this over the side, bring these things over that side. It's going to be some constants out here. 4 pi squared over gm, right? And then r cubed, okay? Right? So now, we can go and plug in values for the sun and stuff like that. So let's plug in values. For sun, which is m is equal to 2 times 10 to 30 kilograms. And then r is 1 AU, is equal to 1.5 times 10 to 11 meters, right? Okay, you can just plug all those things in. Um, let me just do it real quick. 
This is not an ideal calculator for this sort of thing, but we can try it. Let's see, so let's see, I need um, the four pi, so it's four times pi squared 3.1415 squared, okay, uh, divide this by g 6.67, oh crap, times 10 to the minus 11, would that work? Hopefully that works, all right, um, then this is multiply times m 2 times 10 to the 30, okay, and I hope this works, okay, and then I'll multiply this again by um, r cubed times um, 1.5, yeah, this is a terrible, terrible calculator, 1.5 times 10 to the 11, close that up, raise that to the q power, okay, and this was 9.98 times 10 to the 14. Um, can I do this to the 0.5? All right, so that's actually right. So they end up getting something t is equal to 3.16 times 10 to the 7 seconds, which is approximately one year, okay? 3.15 times 10 to 7 seconds is actually one year. So it's actually very, very good. Okay. So that's it, all right? That's exactly Kepler's law. All right. Now, um, I'm going to close up with some discussion of basically the magnitude of the force of gravity. All right, for spheres, okay, R is from center of sphere, all right? Okay, so the thing is this, this factor R here in the force of gravity, if you have a brown object, you gotta figure out what R is, right? So that's always from the center of sphere. So for instance, the, uh, if you have the Earth here, okay, and you're on the surface of the Earth, you put a mass there, all right, there's an R, okay, this is like the RE, for instance, the rate of the Earth, the mass of the Earth, okay, uh, RE is equal to uh, 6,371 kilometers, the mass of the Earth is equal to 6 times 10 to 24 kilograms, right? So the force of gravity is equal to GME over RE squared times the mass, right? Which should be basically M times G. So we can just check this real quick, all right? Um, so that implies that G should be equal to, we cancel the M, GM over RE squared. Okay, so um, let me check that real quickly. Whoops. Okay, let's blow everything away. Okay, so now it's 6.67 uh, times 10 to the minus 11 times 6 times 10 to 24. Okay, and now we divide this by. Um, it's, uh, this is a kilometer, so 6.371 times, whoops, all right, so this is why I hate this calculator, okay, 6.371 times 10 to the 6th power, if I remember correctly, no, yes, and then I want to square this thing, square it. Oh, come on, 9.8, that's exactly what I want that. 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So that worked out, okay? I don't know what this stuff is like, stupid calculator, all right. Okay, now, suppose you have the same thing, all right? 
But rather than you sing on the surface of the Earth, you're sitting on some satellite above the surface of the Earth, okay? By about 400 kilometers, okay? Right? So now R is this distance here. R is going to be equal to the rays of the Earth plus uh, 400 kilometers. So this is basically 6.771 times 10 to the 6 meters now. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and compute the acceleration of the gravity for a satellite. GME over R squared. Okay. Right. So it's uh let's compute that again. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6 times 10 to 24 divided by um now this one is 6.771 times 10 to the 6. Close that, square the entire thing. There we go. Now it's 8.7. 8.7 meters per second squared. So uh, if you're orbiting above the Earth and you say stop yourself, right, and you put a table there, you will feel less gravity as a result because you're further away. Right? So now, based on this, we can figure out how fast the satellite moves. How fast is satellite moving? All right? So, AC is equal to V squared over R. This better be equal to GME over R squared. So you can figure this out already. This is going to be basically give you that V squared is equal to GME over R, which is V is equal to the square root of GME over R. I'm running out of time, I gotta go teach class in a second, so I'll just write down what the answer is. V is gonna be equal to 7.6 kilometers per second, which roughly translates to 70,000 miles per hour. All right, and uh, that's it for gravity.